You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistoski and Nick Hawk right here on LA Talk Radio. Whether you're a man seeking to get better with the opposite sex or a woman looking for some insight, I believe we can help. We formulated this show to help males become more modern in their mode of thought. We've developed a methodology of the modern male, a series of all the areas a man can develop himself to become more attractive to women. This show will teach you how to become the new archetypal male, a male with the freedom to dress, groom, and behave, removed of social constructs, and only adherent to the truth of what women seek, taking the best qualities and attributes from every social dynamic and integrating their understanding with undeniable logic. This show will teach you how to become the one true archetype. Welcome to the Modern Male Movement. I'm your host, Jared Zavostoski, and you're listening to Modern Male Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the shit your daddy never knew. And as always, my co-host, author, actor, entrepreneur, and star of Showtime's Gigolos, I give you the Sultan of Smooth, the Commander of Cock, the Tyrannosaurus Rex of Sex. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce Lord of Them Thighs and all that's inside. Give it up for Nick Hawk. Thank you, Jared. Welcome, guests, and welcome, listeners. Thank you for being part of the movement, and happy Halloween. Any Halloween plans, Jared? Uh, not really. I think uh, me and my uh, my boy. Are you going trick or treating? No costume. Uh, I, Prince. Uh, what is it? Prince Eric and Ariel. I think is what we're doing. But the whole Kim Kardashian thing. I was just on the internet today, and I was like, oh, damn it, that bitch stole my thing." <laughs> you we, we still got you. Kind of. Kind Shit. of. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're starting a, uh, a a get Nick to LA fund. Anybody in the area that has a house or uh, a Winnebago or something of that nature and wants to donate it to the modern male movement, um, we're accepting offers right now because we need to get Nick out to <laughs> no, LA. I'm going to be in the studio a lot more. I'm coming next week. I told you I'd be down there next week. Um, it'll be more of a regular thing. Awesome. So uh, what are your Halloween plans? I heard you were having a party. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, what are you doing? No, I'm, I'm attending the Fetish and Fantasy Halloween Ball. I've done that the last few years, and it's, uh, it's, it's one of the best parties on earth. Um, it take normal Halloween and all the amazing costumes that the girls like wearing and times it by 10 when you add the Fetish and Fantasy theme to it. And it gets pretty wild. They have uh, tons of live... Uh, live stage shows and uh djs and it's, it's been a lot of fun so uh i'll be attending that tomorrow awesome cool is there anything else exciting that's going on ha uh, that's about it um it looks like uh this week we're gonna be hitting fashion yep. and in the studio tonight to discuss with us we have nation bishop chase smith and also brooke haven How's everybody doing? Nathan, why don't you give us a little background on yourself, please? Well, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Moved out here to run track and field. Did that for quite some time. Kind of built a few businesses in the meantime while I was hanging out in L.A., and now I do uh, residential real estate. Good stuff. You moved out here to run track and field uh, with college? Yeah, I ran for, college? Yeah, I ran at Cal State. Okay, good stuff. Chase, what's up, man? Chance. <laughs> hey, I'm going to recorrect you. It's Chance, not Chase, if you don't mind. <laughs> C-H-A-N? C-H-A-N-C-E, like take a chance. All right. <laughs> That's I a had, good uh, tagline. Yeah, That's what Jared <laughs> That's what I tell all the girls. Email, so you can blame Jared for that one. <laughs> no, it says Chance. I've got the copy of it right here. <laughs> and now I'm, we're I'm, starting an argument. <laughs> it says Chance right here. <laughs> um. That's funny. So I can see, I can hear the, the southern drawl uh, in you. Where are you from? I'm actually from East Texas, a little small town called Jefferson, Texas. We have four red lights in the whole town. so They're never can, green? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> they're only red all the hardly, time. Hardly ever they're green. <laughs> cool. So how you like in L.A.? Uh, I love L.A. Uh, a, lot, you know, a lot different, of course, from a small town. Uh, traffic sucks. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm gonna let you know. It Welcome you to traffic. <laughs> five minutes down the road is actually 20 minutes in LA. So uh, yeah, every a, everywhere in LA. That's takes why I'm not in the studio tonight. <laughs> <by> the <way. laughs> that's the main reason. Yeah, it's Thursday night, the night before Halloween. Good luck getting around. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I, I called Uber Chopper to get here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Worth the money. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So uh, uh, continue, Nick. Did you inter- Nothing, just introducing everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I felt like I cut you off. So I was about to intro Brooke, and I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to Nick. 
And I'll give it right back over to Brooke. <laughs> How's it going, Brooke? What's your background? Well, actually, funny that we're here talking to you now because Chance and I were almost at your house. What night was that? Saturday, Saturday night? night? At a party at your house? <laughs> Oh, no shit. Yes, but um, we got tired, but we, yes, we were about 10 minutes from your house before we went to our hotel. Don't let, don't let her lie to you. She got drunk. I had to carry her back. You are, he is full of it. Okay, now that you just did that, by the way, I'm just going to out you because Mr. Texas over here that's been telling me all along, he can out drink me that I better be able to keep up and blah, blah, blah. We went to a wedding. We went out with some of your friends, Nick. To about three clubs and then at some point I came out and Mr. Life of the Party over here was sitting on a speaker looking like he was having the worst time of his life. And I was like, Are we tired now? And he's like, I'm all tired. He's like, I have a headache from all the blah blah blah. So I'm like, Okay, well let's just get you home and I have pictures of him sleeping in the cab. So nice, nope, it wasn't stuff. me uh, that was being what carried the hell home. Did I do? Where was I? Um, you were at your house. <laughs> no, before that. Before that. Body English. Were you at Body English? I was judging a model contest, actually, and it was going pretty well, and there was a lot of hot girls, so I decided to have a after party after that. We were at SLS at Life with oh. uh, TJ and Jason and some people that ended up at your house. <laughs> nice. Yeah, real, real close friends of mine. How, how was Life? Life's a new club here in Vegas. It was good. It was good. It wore one of us out, and it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> She's full of jokes, ain't she? <laughs> well, is it a joke or is it reality? I'm not sure. It's blurred vision. <laughs> Either way, it was a good time. Jesus, it you was guys a good are time. It was a great time. Great time. Great time. You guys are like a married couple already. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see this working out. <laughs> well, we do live together, so. That is true. Oh, we not have a marriage counselor on today. <laughs> usually have one of those in the studio. Nick, are you the new marriage counselor for us? <laughs> not yet. I'm not going there yet. <laughs> Oh, no, we had one of those on last week. Uh, that was interesting. I liked Eno a lot. But we are not talking about dating at all today. We're actually talking more about uh, fashion because uh, when I started writing this book, uh, there were a few people in my life. Um, Brooke, you were actually one of the people that I let read. You were one of the first people I let read the book. Right there on your couch uh -huh. with Tina trying to distract us every step of the way. Yeah, <laughs> she's wonderful like that. We love her for um, that. <laughs> and I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was friends with you, Nate. And I remember, you know, it kind of we, we had a similar style. And it was it, when I started the Modern Male Movement and when I wrote that book, I mean, I literally just kind of wanted to create the book and slap 90% of the guys that I met in the face with it and True. be like, look, you're fucking up. Uh, and here's why I've synthesized the information. I've created a to-do list for you here. Whap. And like, you were one of the only people that I was like, I actually kind of learned from a little bit. And I was like, oh, wow, that looks, that's, it's cool. And you had a very awesome, uh, you know, sense of style. And then we actually talked about you writing a book, uh, you know, where the gentlemen go. No, I, it, yeah. Where'd the gentlemen go? Yep. Yeah. Pretty much is the title I was looking at. Because I noticed that you've got a very um, debonair uh, GQ thing going, and you, you pull it off so well that I, I wanted to have you in and talk about that. I know you do real estate in too, Beverly Hills. Too but kind, too kind. Yeah. <laughs> you already wrote that book? Did you, you published it? No, I haven't. Uh, I've just really kind of jotted it down in my, uh, my note section of my iPad. It's just jumbled probably 100 pages of stuff, but I haven't had the time to really go through it. I'm building the foundation, so I'm getting that up and running in January. So I've been, kind of been a little tied up, so I haven't really focused on putting that out yet. That's how Might modern share a little started. bit of it with us? Yeah. Um, you, you know, it's just the concept of really where the gentlemen go. You look at it nowadays, and so many people are just so self-involved. They don't take the time to say hi or be polite. And most people are like, how do you know this girl? How do you talk to that person? I go, well, you know, I just go up and I go, hi, my name's Nathan. And I just am a gentleman about it. We go out. We have a good time. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm very honest who I am. I tell you what I'm looking for. I tell you what I'm going to do. And I, and I go do it and I execute it. And most people don't do that, especially in L.A. But in general, you just don't see that. In today's society, it's something that's far gone. So, you know, I think it's something that we should take. And the word gentleman, I think a lot of people nowadays use it as, like, being a pussy. And it's not. It's like if you look back in the day, people were gentlemen, like, like, it's in the way you dress and the way you act, the way that you are, the, you know, the way that you handle business. And people aren't like that these days. And so I think that's something that's important. Yeah. And so it's just kind of giving it a new twist. That's all. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And there's a the part of our, uh, me and Nick's program, uh, we, we're, we're going to incorporate, uh, it's a, a gentleman's training program out of uh, UK called Perfect Gentleman. And one of their books that, they, uh, that the owner actually uh, sent me you know, they kind of describe that, that gentlemen were, were, they weren't pussies. They were actually trained all around. Yeah. They were actually trained in martial arts. They were trained in, uh, uh, you know, etiquette, standards, all this stuff. It was basically uh, a, an archetype for development. 
So it's cool that we're kind of bringing that back. I mean, we had the 90s. That was embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, and then the 2000s was like, wow, look at me. We got new colors. And then, you know, I th- feel like we're finally getting to a decade where people are like, dude, it's cool to be chic. Like, it's cool to be simple. It's cool to be, like, elegant. And black is okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like like a black shirt says a lot. It does okay. a lot. It, way more than, hey, I like this band. Bam! You like that band, too? Because I like this band. Can you tell I fucking like this band? <laughs> like, it's just loud and obnoxious. And it's like, it, it distracts people. I think that that's a big thing. You know, good fashion is, is the same as, as any sort of uh, uh, social elegance. Um, it, it's lubricant. I always, I always used to say, people be like, why do you dress up? Like, why do you, you don't need to. I'd be like, no, it's lubricant. If, you, if everything's clean on the outside, it allows somebody an easier time to get to know you on the inside. They don't get hung up on your belief system painted on your chest. <laughs> no. Like, well, that person's like that. Your yeah, EDC it, candy. It's <laughs> funny <laughs> because... Exactly. It's funny because you say that, like, you know, I... Remember years and years ago, I was young, and uh, this guy's like, you know, you you know, you dress pretty sharp. And I was young, I was pretty young kid. And he goes, you know, why do you do that? I go, ah, just for the hell of it. And he goes, well, you know what? I think you should continue to do it because you never know who you're gonna meet. And he gave me his business card. And it was like my first step into like owning my own business as a kid. The guy like was really cool, had his business, and, and did really well back home where I'm from. And it was just cool. But it's like like you said, like you never know who you're gonna meet. You know, why not take the time to just look the part, even if it's not super special, but it's just. Better than the most. You know what I mean? Well, most it, people just are too lazy these days. Yeah, and a, an example I always use is like if I walked up to you with a beat to hell box wrapped in dirty newspaper that I peed on, with left it in the corner for like a week, and then I go back and I take this ugly piece of shit and I walk up to you with it and I go, hey, I want you to trust me. There's something very valuable inside. If you, if you open this, you'll like it. What would you do? You'd go, oh, that box smells. Like, get it away from me. I'd take the chance and, and open it. People, <laughs> I'd be like, hmm, I, too. I mean, what's why going not? on? You never know. Take a chance, right? right. Yeah. I mean, we'd probably open it, but most girls would be like, ew, yeah. that box smells yeah. like pee. Nobody touch it. Nobody touch it. <laughs> so, you know, that's, and, and I, what I really wanted to get to was, uh, you know, you're an Abercrombie model. Exactly. How long have you been doing that? Uh, actually, long story short, uh, six years ago is how I got into it. Okay. Met a guy in Dallas, Texas. He told me he was an Abercrombie agent. Thought he was a liar, bullshitter. Gave me a card. I ended up calling him. He flew me to New York. And uh, that was uh, six years ago. So. Boom. <laughs> Boom. You so still work for Abercrombie? I, I still do. Uh, last photo shoot I did was probably six months ago, probably. How uh, were you dressed when you met him? Nice. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, when I first <laughs> met them, I'm more of myself. I'm more of my personality. Get to know people. And I walked in there kind of like I'm dressed now. Boots, blue jeans, and a white T-shirt, a white V-neck. Yeah. And uh, that's how I pretty much go everywhere. I wake up every day. It's not that I'm lazy and I don't want to dress up. It's that, you know, that's my look, you know. and that's It's cool, it. man. We're in the same boat. T-shirts, yeah. my look I, as well. Yeah, like, yeah actually, right clean, that's funny because you walk in here and I thought, wow, that's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. Nick, you made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right here. Right here. Surprise. <laughs> I mean, I feel more comfortable doing that and just being myself. I got a black t-shirt on right now. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in a black v-neck right now. It's either black v-neck or white v-neck or brown boots, black boots, and blue jeans. And, I mean, that's what yeah. I feel more comfortable with. Hey, man, with. that's cozy. Yeah. I know, the dressing exactly. your part is, is taking care of yourself. And it's the way you act, and, and there's exactly. many things involved with it as well. Well, and a lot of people think that good fashion is simply like, oh, you got to dress up. More, more is better, and sometimes less is more. Uh, you know, really just making sure that everything's clean, dialed in, and everything is appropriately placed. You know, I've, I've seen people in a white tee, and they had, a, you know, a great necklace on, a great wrist piece on, you know, a, a really awesome watch. And then they had, you know, maybe some jeans and, like, some expensive shoes on. And you're like, oh, wow, that works. It looks good. It's clean. It's aesthetically pleasing. Exactly. And that's, that's, a, that's a huge thing. Um, I think the biggest step is finding your style and what specific, what, what you feel best in and, and the way that, you know, describes you and suits you the best if it's a suit or a T-shirt. Well, I try not to encourage people to do that uh, too far because sometimes what people think uh, their style may be may just be atrocious No, fashion. they definitely need a little <laughs> encouragement and, and advice from others if, <laughs> if they're starting from square one. But you do need to find your own style and what, yeah. whatever that is and make it work for you. And there's definitely there's definitely different archetypes that you can follow, where, whether it's, you know, chic, clean GQ, whether it's more, uh, you know, clubby, whether it's more, uh, you know, I'm going to be a little bit more artistic and hipster, or, you know, badass. Uh, and then you can you can you know, you can take it, but you can take it too far in any of those directions. And I've seen people with like, I'm like, oh, my God, like, really? 
Like you are the poster child for everything that's wrong with your genre. You know, and exactly. you see those Definitely people. Definitely got to pull it together. Just too much. I would like to tell you guys, mm -hmm. when I picked this one up from the airport, <laughs> he's going to kill me for this, but I'm just going to have to out him this again. Is my, oh, yeah? This is my fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so I pick him up from the airport, our first time really hanging out, 7.30 in the morning, and I'm looking for him everywhere. I'm just not seeing him, half asleep. And then out of nowhere jumps this guy with neon green tennis shoes, Whitish something golf shorts, a neon green shirt, and a cowboy hat. Wow. <laughs> so it's like, here I am. And That's I was a picture like, right there. do I know you? That's you awesome. work for a modeling agent. Like, that was you in work Vegas. For, That's what? most people in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that we were in LA, Las Vegas. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Abercrombie is a, no a, a fashion <laughs> company, right? Like, they sell clothes. They are. They and are. you get free clothes, yeah? <laughs> I do. But when I travel, I like to be comfortable and relaxed, too. And Nothing says comfort like a cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Makes you feel good. Same Woo, we're going to go to the hotel tonight. <laughs> uh, it was a sight. And I still took him home with me. After, Aww. But I did, well, we did you go straight from. You altruistic thing, you. <laughs> we did go straight from the airport to a audition at a dating show. Yep, <laughs> so it was happen. the whole day. Wow. Uh, that's Good meeting. That's kind of awkward, huh? <laughs> so, uh, okay, one of the things I wanted to cover, so since we're, we're, we're kind of straying away from this, but uh, what are the three biggest fashion faux pas that you guys see? And it doesn't, there's no right or wrong. So let's, let's start with Nate, and then we're going to work our way down. Um, Nate, what do you see are the three main fashion faux pas? And don't be afraid of hurting anybody's feelings. That's uh, what this show's for. Gotcha. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, but some days I do. But <laughs> for, me, for me, man, just simple stuff. Like, you know, an accessory goes a long way. Like, come on, like, step it up in the today's world. Like, great socks go a long way. Like, you can go to the dollar store and buy amazing socks. Yeah, your sock collection is actually <laughs> quite impressive. Like, I don't own a pair of white socks. Like, it's just I don't do it. Um, plus, it makes it easier for my laundry. I'd be sitting next to this guy at a convention, and he'd like he pull up his his foot over his leg like this, and yeah, I'd see like rubber duckies and like oh, there's all you've had, you've had the strangest collection of socks I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, it, it's fun, you know. Like I said, I mean, really, my main reason is because I like colors and just don't care about what anyone else thinks. But mainly, when I'm doing my laundry, you just go to the, the pattern or the color. I'm done. Socks are the worst thing. So, note to self for those of you out there: uh, goofy, funny, nice socks are a way to uh, kind of uncover your personality through a suit, which I sure. think was interesting because you can wear a suit and you can, you can be you know, completely tailored up and dry as hell, or you can, do, you can show your personality a little bit. And sometimes if you do that through a shirt or through an accessory, it's too much and it's loud. So it's an interesting thing to note that you could actually do that through a pair of socks, yeah, which I, I think fun. is awesome. It's okay. a good lubricant. What's your yeah, number you two? <laughs> Uh, man, to be honest with you, no, no belt. Even if you don't need it, put it on. Like, I swear to God, like, I can't stand, like, not having a belt. I just think that it's something that you should always have on. Like, you know, I, I, you constantly like to pull your pants up all day because I don't. So I'm just like, over the course of the day, that just would be annoying. I don't so, have a belt on. See, I don't know how you do that. How are you, you guys got, you even friends? I, I got a good tailor. Yeah. <laughs> see, okay, there you I go. I have a good then tailor. If you have a good tailor, then that's fine. <laughs> if, but you're in a suit and I'm not. I'm in pants. So it's a little different. Yeah, but true. No, I would wear a belt suits, yes. and pants. Um, and the third thing, like, I mean, just simple stuff. Like, I saw a guy the other day with a baseball hat, like, just a straight 5950, which is a great hat, good bill, but then he had that sticker still on it. I'm like, what are you thinking? You know, just little puns like that. What, what, what caused you to do that? Yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think it might have been the 90s, that one. I think it that stemmed from two things. A, so you could take the thing back, and B, because when you <laughs> removed it, it had like gunk on there. But I, I never really wore hats. And because uh, what were those? It's fresh. fresh kids. And they clean. would do yeah. it. It's not fresh and clean. Nothing about that's fresh. Right, and let's clean. kick it. I like Yo, what vanilla. Jared says in his book about baggy clothing. You want to touch on that real quick, Jared? Baggy clothing. Uh, yeah. I. Uh, what, what is the baggy clothing? Um, oh yeah. Uh, so. My, my theory on how baggy clothing became popular um, was that, you know, it, it came out of the inner city. Inner city kids didn't have enough money or their parents didn't have enough money to buy them new clothes every year. So basically, they got a lot of hand-me-down stuff, which, you know, innately would be very baggy. So you got these kids running around in baggy clothes. Well, a couple of them made it, got on TV. They're like, I like baggy clothes because it became a part of their identity, who they were. And now all these other kids see these kids in baggy clothes and they're going, oh, my God, we should all wear baggy clothes. And that's how shitty fashion came to be. Um, and uh, I forget what the tagline is on that. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You really want to walk around uh, with, with like a, a giant poster on yourself that says, I can't, I can't afford clothes that fit. 
uh, it's basically what you're wearing. It's a sign that says, I can't, I can't afford clothes that fit when you're wearing like super baggy stuff and people go, oh, it's comfortable. And I go, no, you look like a slob. <laughs> like that's exactly. just sloppy. Um, so that's what I think about baggy clothes. But, you um, and you can't run in baggy pants. I've seen it. I've seen guys oh, try. Oh, those guys sag and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like waddling. They're going to lose that battle. <laughs> like, oh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, and I mean, the, the whole fashion section of my book is actually kind of written like that, where it's really, uh, it, it's quite funny. You actually read that today, didn't you? Yes, I, I, did. I, I made her, I, did. I made you do homework. You did. <clears throat> What'd you think? I think it was, I mean, great because, you know, it tells you how to dress yourself and how to go forth with yourself, uh, present yourself as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, I agree with the baggy clothes. Uh, I know there's there's an old saying to go with uh, sagging is what they call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an old prison thing. That's how I got started, sagging. Oh, yeah. It means I'm like, know. I'm open for delivery. Yeah, it's open for <laughs> oh, delivery wow. or something. It's an old prison <laughs> thing. That, that I couldn't funny. remember I, how I, it went. I didn't know yeah. I never either. knew that. I never yeah, knew yeah, that. That's well, fun, I've never been to prison. Yeah, me yeah. neither. So. <laughs> fun fact for the day, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, I'm not, I, I wonder if that's a fact or if that was just the, some parent who was yeah. like, Look, every time you sag, <laughs> some prison guy's gonna get it. He's right? gonna get the wrong idea. <laughs> so, Brooke, what do you think of the three uh, biggest fashion faux pas that guys commit on a daily basis? White socks with White. black suits. Nope, just don't do it. Back to socks. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think a bad hat is a bad idea. I'm gonna what about say white underwear. No, nobody. No I like that. white underwear. <laughs> nobody actually, underwear, as long no. as it's just white underwear and nothing else. Nobody. No. I think a man looks white great underwear. in white. No white underwear. No white socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with Nick on this one. Really? Uh, uh, yeah, all my undergarments are black. I prefer my guy to be getting out of bed in nothing but a pair of white underwear if he's not naked. That's well, just me. Yeah. If, I if I'm getting out in and out of bed, yeah. I mean, if I'm getting in and out of bed, I'll never get girl, out of bed in underwear. I, yeah, I'm not wearing underwear. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're all thinking the same thing. It's like, wait, wait. Who Chance, put, why do you have underwear, underwear on in, in the mornings? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Uh, my, my balls kind of sag down. So I pull them up. You know, we got, I got to hey, keep man, them protected. You got to keep them protected. You know, you don't want to roll over and, you know. All of our yourself. all of our female listeners just <laughs> completely just shot their load all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> They're all sitting there like, boop, my ovaries dropped. <laughs> I don't oh, like yeah. my third one is I hate those like it's not a sweatshirt it's like a tight kind of sweatshirt thing with a hood I don't like it like not as a zippy I'm fine with a hoodie I don't like that like 80s like pullover, pullover with the hood that's tight so you don't like ninja Dorky. clothes nope Jump no suit. ninja don't do it don't do it nope not into it okay no ninja <laughs> clothes and no neon green Mm-mm. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> I'm screwed what is, I, I, I'm screwed. I'm I, screwed. Yeah, I hit the uh, neon in the book too. Uh, what is it? Because because it's loud. Like that's what they call it loud. It's like loud and flashy and this and that. Well, girls are subtle. So like when you do anything, girls notice it. And and you know little details. A guy would look at it and he'd think, oh, I don't. You know, like cufflinks. Like we've never noticed those, but women do. They notice cufflinks and watch and, mm-hmm. and little things Ooh, like that. Watch a nice watch. You're right. That says a lot for me. So, <laughs> you know, when you wear something that's like, bam, hey, look at me. That's why they call it loud, because it's like yelling in somebody's ear. Uh, and that's what people don't get. Like, guys are like, oh, shit. Like, you know, that's, that's exciting. And women are like, ah, oh, oh, that's too much. Um, so no neons. Mm-hmm. No neons. No neons. <laughs> no neons. <laughs> there goes my wardrobe. <laughs> do you, uh, so Chance, do you have a top three? I do have a top three. Uh, I think piercings. I mean, I think people get piercings in the wrong spots. Their nose, their eyebrows, their ears, their lips. Okay. Um, I think it makes you look trashy, uh, low class, unprofessional. Agreed. Uh, and to be honest with you, I mean, I have my ears pierced, but, I mean, I've had them pierced for probably four years, and I probably could count on both my hands how many times I've worn earrings. You know, when I was a it kid. It was one of those things I wanted when I was younger. And, uh, yeah. yeah, well, when I, I was a kid, it. it was, uh, what was it? it? The, if you got it on the left side, you were gay or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I have no it was clue, like, but yeah. Was it the George Michael trend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> back streets, back, all right. <laughs> I didn't know which one it was, so I just got both of them done. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, I told him, by the way, when I saw that, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> I don't like the piercings. No, no, no. Please don't wear yeah. earrings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got piercings. What else? Uh, I think vulgar language on shirts. Uh, I don't know if y'all have a Spencer's around here. It's a good uh, place that we have back home as well. You know, vulgar language. Uh, it's like one has a rooster on it. Says, "Look at my cock" or something like that. Yeah. I oh, agree. I also think that's unprofessional. Bad taste. 
uh, makes you look trashy as well, low class. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just one of my other flaws that I have. And another one, like I said, baggy clothes. Uh, I think baggy clothes makes you look unprofessional, get clothes that fit. Like Nate said, wear a belt. I wear a belt every day when I walk out. Yeah. Shorts, jeans. Unless I'm wearing basketball shorts to go work out in, mm -hmm. I don't have a belt on. Middle America, Chance hates yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he still loves you. Just, just to implement new exactly. situations. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, cool. Uh, so this, this, we actually come right back into it. I'm going to go right back to you, Nate. Uh, what are three things that you recommend, okay, besides the faux pas, like – if I was a guy and I had, let's say, a hundred bucks, so like low budget, and I wanted to clean up my look, how would you advise somebody to do it? Real quick, Jared, did we hit yours? Did we get no, all we yours? did not. I think we got my main <laughs> two. Oh. Uh, mine was uh, clothes that don't fit for sure. Even if it's a t-shirt, I don't like baggy shirts at all. And then I don't like loud shit either. Those are my two biggest ones. We cover all yours, Jared? Um, my biggest fashion faux pas, well, I have fucking, I have so many, but, uh, <laughs> my biggest fashion faux pas for me personally are wearing casual shoes with dress clothes. I think that that's, it's kind of a, a show of disrespect for me. Like when I see somebody going, yeah, I'm going to dress up, but I did this on purpose, you know, just to like, to show you how cool I am. Like when people do that kind of shit, I'm like, eh, um, I think shoes make the man a hundred percent. So I, you know, shoes are always, always a big thing. Um, and Wear shirts that fit. Uh, you know, that's that's a huge one. Like, don't wear shirts that are too big for you or too small or too for you. Or too small. Yeah, you don't even walk around like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm too buff. And yeah. um, let's see. Uh, the other, I, and I'm actually gonna gonna borrow one of Chance's things. I I don't like it when people uh, do things as they don't they they adhere to one certain look because they're interested in something. So like with the piercings or the tattoos or the whatever, um, you know, I, I see a lot of people that will adopt a look and then that style will become a persona and then that persona will become what they think is them. And they only hang out at certain bars. They only do certain things. They only have certain friends because they've now, they went from, hey, I'm going to wear this metal shirt to I'm going to wear this metal shirt and I'm going to get a tattoo on the side of my neck and I'm going to, you know, get all these piercings and da, da, da. And they go to this point of no return where it's like, it's not even a point of no return. Uh, I actually think that guys like that look great in suits. Uh, I think that, you know, this whole, especially this, this new uh, beard thing that's coming out where guys with tattoos are getting beards and they're dressing super dapper. I think that is awesome. Um, and I love that there's, there's a big push to do that. But for a while, it was, I hate, I think it's a huge fashion faux pas to negate fashion as something that you, uh, that you can't do independently of who you are. You know, fashion is something that you can adopt, develop. Uh, you can go from here to there. This day you can look like that. The next day you can look like that. You can dress appropriate to your environment. And that's, that's kind of what, what we cover in the intro with being a new archetypal male is I want to make sure that every guy knows that, like, you don't have to stick to an archetype. The guy that you, you know, grew up as and the guy that you think that you developed into a, a, as a complete person doesn't have to make choices um, that close you off. You know, you can actually do things. Uh, you can dress a certain way. You can, you can do things that are outside your social genre or, or whatever you've created around you. So I really wanted to impress that point. Um, so I think that that's a huge faux pas. Um, we're going to go, we're going to come right back to Nate. Things that you would recommend men do? Um, well, first and foremost, um, it really comes down to uh, for your wardrobe. It's really you got to work said out. with a hundred bucks, Jared. Yeah, what would you do if you had a hundred bucks? Like, how would you how would you get somebody up in class? Uh, all right. Well, to change your wardrobe, you know, like seriously, if you have a hundred bucks, like I do it all the time. Like I don't like to spend a fortune on designer clothes. I could care less. Yeah. Like I'm wearing a vest right now. I got it at the Goodwill, and you would never know it. Like so, I mean, Thrift open up. Shop. Yeah, open up your horizons and get creative. Like, learn to make shit. Learn to sew a little bit. Learn to get creative. Buy something. Change it up a little bit. Do something else. But mainly, like, work out. Get your shit tailored and you'll look great. But mainly, one thing that you can do is, if I was to say anything, the easiest way for someone to kind of put their wardrobe together is literally watch the movie Crazy Stupid Love. Reference what Ryan Gosling says. 16 things every man should have. Like, literally, you should get those. And there you go. But the one thing I will tell you is, if you live by the rule of, buying one thing every week or every two weeks for your wardrobe, even if it's the stupidest little thing, it'll go a long way in the long haul. You'll build a huge wardrobe and you'll have a huge selection to pick from. But mainly, if you're on a budget 
I mean, like flea markets, thrift stores, Goodwills, mm -hmm. you know, um, secondhand stores, anything along those lines, you know, just check it out. Like you got to learn to bargain shop. You got to learn to know what you fit and how you fit. And the other thing I would say is find friends that are in fashion that are in downtown. They have tons of clothes that they give away constantly that are just for model stuff. You can take it off their yep. hands for nothing. So why not go down there and, you know, get free clothes? Yeah. I mean, I did that when I needed to, so it works. I'm just saying, you got you to think smarter than the system. Huh. Okay. That was well thought out. Yeah, yeah. Well out. <coughs> Glad I gave you guys your talking points three yeah. hours before the show. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Okay, so oh. mine. I think, um, so we're on the budget. Where to go if you're on a budget? Or are we on the watch? Yeah. Okay, so H&M I think is decent. Yep. I'm a big fan. I might get shot down for this, but I tend to think that Target has a pretty good selection of clothes For girls. Days. I will say that. I walk into Target and you're like, God, <clears throat> man, if I was a girl, like shopping <laughs> clothes be would be the <laughs> most amazing thing in the world. But for guys, no. I get really it, though. When you see that, you're like, totally unfair. I'm actually totally kind of shocked. Girls can um, pop into like a random little drugstore and come out with the cutest top. You're like, where'd you get that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, totally. Totally unfair. Um, and also, if I was a guy, I'd go shop in one of my best friend's closets that had great style. <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, you mean steal the shit? Yeah, not steal <laughs> it, but I would just be like, oh, you don't want this anymore? I'm taking it. Yeah. People get tired of their clothes yeah, pretty easily. That's true. I mean. If you're on a budget and you got a date, best friend's closet. That is true. Yeah, like like start start hitting up the, yeah. the social network and be like, look, do <laughs> yeah. any of you have any clothes that you'd be willing to size get rid of? Seven, or size just, seven. Or just get smarter and, and, and create a donation box, give half of it away. A GoFundMe.com. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that way, you know, Need to people dress better. like, hey, you're just Help taking my stuff. Better. No, 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 I'm giving half of it away. But. Totally. <laughs> Did you get through all three, Brooke? Is that yeah, three? that was all three. Okay, yeah. awesome. You're up. Uh, like a, pretty much the same thing they said, you know, Target, Walmart, Goodwill. I mean, you can buy cheap stuff. Walmart, Target, they sell white tees, black tees, I mean, gray tees, any other mm -hmm. color. I mean, color coordinated, get it. Go buy a cheap pair of pants. Uh, you can buy a pair, of, I mean, they may not be expensive. They not be, may not be a pair of $700 cowboy boots or, you know, a pair of Nikes or nothing else. But, I mean, get it while you can. Get the cheaper brand. Dress up a little bit more. And just from there, we'll just keep on rolling. And that's the only way I know how to get so with a hundred dollars, it's the only way I would know how to do it. Target cheaper ways. You got to look at it as I mean, you, you do have a hundred bucks, which is fine. But exactly. the other thing is, look at your city. We live in LA, right? Yeah. yeah. Nothing's a hundred bucks. But no, you can't get exactly. a pair of shoes. What for I'm saying bucks. is, exactly. that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, we live in LA. What resources do we have, right? We're in the entertainment business. Thousands. There's millions of wardrobes that they have to get rid of. True. Look exactly. them up. Mm -hmm. Go there. They will give this stuff 100% away. Hundred percent true. All I'm saying is, like, yep. you, you know, you don't need to <laughs> shop cheap. Just shop mm -hmm. smart. And then you'll find it or get creative. Take a cover of GQ or something from GQ or style that you like mm -hmm. and go, how can I make that? Bam, you know, you hit the thrift store, I get the shirt I needed or the concept of it. Then you can hem it yourself or go to the tailor and they'll tailor it your way. Like, I mean, little steps like that, which you're going to take something that's cheap, that took a little thought and process that makes you look amazing. And that's the difference. Yeah. Because everybody can go and just buy the same old dumb shit that mm -hmm. everyone has. Exactly. Like when you were in high school, everyone had the same- Cookie cutter. Uh, everyone had the same Amercrombie shirt or the same exactly. Amercrombie. Like exactly. I hated that. I never was that kid. I was always doing my own thing. I can see so that So like about you. that's the concept of what I'm saying in the sense of if you have a budget, think outside that box. It's the same thing with anything, but mm -hmm. that's really what you have to do. Just keep creating. Yeah, or you, you could go to these stores, you can buy shit that's on sale or buy stuff yeah. that's on clearance or go, go to outlet malls opposed to the, the normal malls. You don't have to have the, the item that just came out, nobody knows the difference anyways. Whenever I feel like, whenever I spend a lot of money on a shirt or clothes or, or jeans or anything, I feel like, you know, they got the better of me and I'm giving my yeah. money to the man, you know, like buy, buy shit that's on sale or clearance or go to these outlet malls. Just about all, all large cities have them now. Go to a thrift store in Beverly Hills. <laughs> You're going to get good stuff. you got to be specific. I was going to tell you, like, speaking from That's Texas, stuff, in yeah, Texas, and there's a garage sale every weekend, <laughs> and there's people, you know, selling clothes for $2 a dollar. You know, sometimes it's cheaper than going to, you know, Goodwill, Target, Walmart. In L.A., on Melrose has uh, mm -hmm. the Crossroads. Is it? Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say, you brought designer used clothes there. They sell yeah. them really cheap. You can get some amazing stuff out of there. I've been oh, yeah. there a couple of times. There's a ton of stuff. And that's actually going into to all like my, my three things. Uh, though, it, with fashion, um, you know, I cover this in the book and I kind of give uh, good examples and, and illustrations. But yeah, thrift shops are a place where I, that's kind of where I started because it allowed me the freedom to uh, fuck up. 
so to speak. Like I was able to go, okay, well, if I make a mistake, it was 20 bucks, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Um, but I think that what the two go hand in hand, uh, thrift shops have been mentioned a lot, but this is one thing that hasn't is a tailor. You can buy something that's a little too big for you and you can take it to somebody and for 10 bucks, 15 bucks, they can stitch it up and make it fit you, which is awesome. So it took me a while to figure out the whole tailor thing. And then that, that actually, uh, you know, that opened a lot of doors for me. Cause then I realized every time I went into a store and I found something, I could then take that thing and I could make it fit me. I could, I could do whatever I wanted with it. Um, and one of the things that I think is, is monumentally important. Uh, so if you had a hundred bucks and, and I were you, uh, what I would do is I would go to a thrift shop or I would again, ask, ask around. Cause everybody's got an old suit jacket. Everybody's got a black suit jacket, something simple. That's one oh one. Okay. Black suit jacket, nice shoes, not cheap shoes, nice shoes. Okay. When I told people, I'm like, spend that entire hundred bucks on your fucking shoes. Okay. Go get, uh, you know, wh wear whatever pants you want, suit jacket, shoes, white tee, and you're good to go. Like a white V-neck, it comes down to here. It's, uh, you know, maybe not good to go. I would, I would then get a necklace, put it on, uh, you know, something that would kind of highlight that. But there's a lot of indie fashion. You can kind of get away with that. Um, on Melrose, there are a ton of thrift shops that you can go to, uh, not just, uh, Crossroads. There, there are, there are literally, I think there's five or six from La Brea to, uh, what is it? La Brea to Fairfax. There are, there are tons of thrift shops. Uh, Zara is another huge one. I, I think Zara is amazing. And if you go in the summertime to get your winter clothes, you get all of their winter stuff for like half price. And it was only 50 bucks to begin with. So it's like, cool. I want a whole bunch of blazers for you know, 200 bucks. Like I, I bought eight, um, you know, with, with watches and accessories, fake it. Like I, I, I will stand by that. The, the watch that you're wearing does not have to be a thousand bucks. It, it can, it should look like it was a thousand bucks, but it doesn't have to be a thousand bucks. Um, and whatever you, whatever you wear, make sure that you rock it. Don't ever throw something on like, Hey, I'm just going to throw this on and I don't give a fuck. Be like, no, I'm going to put this on and I can rock that. And if you come from that perspective, you'll start to tailor your clothes a little bit better. Whereas you, you're, instead of just accepting like, oh, this looks good enough, be like, cool, how am I going to rock this? How am I going to make this something that I like, that I, I like looking at myself in the mirror? And don't worry about how expensive it is. Just worry about how aesthetically pleasing it is. Is this cool? So yeah. Yep, no. That would be yeah, my it's advice. about finding your style and owning your image. I have to say one more thing about the, the pendants or necklaces or accessories. eBay is a great place to look for those. Exactly. And you can find decent stuff on there. You could type in if you want a heart pendant or a dagger pendant or a dragon pendant. You can type that in. You'll, there's a million of them ranging from what whatever price range. If you only have $5, it's up to you if you have 50 bucks for one or a couple hundred. eBay is a great place to go to, to find some of these extras, uh, accessories and watches and sunglasses as well. That if you can I catch find stuff so different discounted on there if i catch any of my fans going on ebay and buying a dragon pendant i will personally bitch slap you yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you didn't have that in your book <laughs> no no dragons no florida lease no crosses no angel wings no demon wings no and uh, i mean that's it's okay there are there are certain places where that that stuff's acceptable but like doing super super loud especially with jeans like i i personally i hate affliction jeans um the worst yeah and you know with the big loud fucking crosses on the back and the blinged back. out <laughs> like i that I whole know. company <laughs> A lot I hate of that shit too. You need to, if you want to flare up your style a little bit though, you can find some specific pendant that means something to you in some way and, and you can look, find that on eBay. You, you can do, yeah. just for example, like, I mean, look, what you said back on that, Jared, is when you find a style or who you are, you know, it, it, there's two words you look at. You look at confidence and cocky. Don't be cocky. Walk the line of confidence and cocky and that's when you'll find that style that works best for you and you'll own it and you doesn't care what people say. On accessories, yes, like, for example, like, I, I'm, I'm into just making my own or doing my own. I, I like to just be artistic. I took an old watch. I smashed it. I ripped out all the gears, like an old, like, pocket watch. Took out the gears, melt, like, um, tack welded them, put some rope or, like, um, some uh, fishing, uh, fishing line around it, wrapped it a little bit, melted it together, colored it out, and then made a necklace, and you would never even know. It looks like it's some old, worn-out piece of crap you it's found, dope. and it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But same thing. It's like you can take – 
antique silverware, bend it into like a cool ring, bend off the east end of it, and you got something that's really cool and different and it's your own style. But that's what I mean is like you just have to like own it and who cares? And accessories are important. It's like mainly your shoes have to look great and your watch has to be nice. Well, like what and you're saying with that on. balance between cocky and confidence, there's also a balance between owning it, not caring, but also caring enough to make sure that it's worth looking at. Because I think that if, you, if we encourage people to go too far in one direction and they do that, like right now, we're trying to get men to care about the way they look. And they're like, oh, fuck it. Oh, this is my fashion. It's like, no, it's not fashion. You can, if you have fashion, then it can be your own fashion. And you can be like, well, awesome. I think this is dope. But you have to be open to some certain things. And I think you have to be open to a little bit of influence, um, you know, because people make mistakes. Like 90% of the people that I know that would right out, right out the gate be like, hey, I'm a dude. I'm going to get into fashion would go to an affliction store. And they'd be like, okay, cool. I'm going to start rocking that. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock some Ed Hardy. And it's like, they wouldn't know the difference until finally one girl got close enough to them and said, hey, you look like a fucking jackass right now. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> right? Yes. Like, yes. The other thing is when you clean up your look, you know, groom yourself. You know, we all like, yeah. you know, facial hair's big or whatever. Whatever's big at the time. But we're like, going to get, like, yeah. like, groom yeah. yourself. You know what I mean? He's like, we're not there yet. I got a whole story. I got a whole story. I'm caught on recently. I haven't seen too much of it. Yeah, it's a little, it's What's a little over the top. What's that name? I said the affliction in Ed Hardy. That shit's Ugh. all been played out and phased out, That right? was gone like is, 10 years ago. Is there anything else ago. that's yeah. caught on that, that people aren't wearing? I, I haven't seen too much of that anymore, yeah. I think which is a good thing. A, what, the, the a lot of Armenians are wearing rock and that shit still. Yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, that, they were always the ones that were <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, I think that uh, right now, actually, the dapper thing is coming back, which is fucking awesome. Like, the more people I see are, uh, you know, the new stylistic trend is there's this kind of loud garbage style which is cool. Like it's very like blah, you know? Um, and then there's this very chic, like clean, like there's, those are the two main styles that I see. Uh, there's, there's that, um, what was it? I had a guest on and his pictures on my website, Ryan edge, where he had, uh, you know, dirty rocker model thing. Like it's this, it's this new pop punk thing. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. So if I butchered that, I'm sorry, but, uh, there's, there's this, kind of inner city uh thing that's that's cool i like that and then there's also this very chic cleaned up like gentleman and then there's this kind of like dirty thing on top of that where the guys are wearing beards and they're like i'm a man gentleman and i'm i can cut down trees with my beard <laughs> <laughs> which, is, man, which is man, all man. all great it's all fun you gotta love it all yeah but you gotta do it right that's all yeah 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 you really do have to do it right i think um, the beards are too much lately like that guy, Dan Brazilian or whatever he is, Bazarian, and his giant yeah. freaking beard, and now everybody else wants a big giant Santa Claus beard. It's I don't, too much. I Ladies don't. will agree. It's too much between the thighs. <laughs> oh, is that, the, is that the case? There you go. There you go. Well, take it from the expert. <laughs> I had no idea that that was the reason. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I just I would be afraid that things would get lost in there, stuck in there. Food. Would, hygiene uh, <laughs> right. would be a, a, a yeah. small issue for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, facial hair is great in a lot of ways. Too much beard. I think if you're, uh, I don't know. I go back and forth on the beard. I think that everything should be trimmed and look nice. Yeah. And I've seen as guys as it with, looks good. With like, a, I mean, yeah, do it right. Like one of the things that I actually talk about in the book is if you do have a beard, uh, you know turn from right to left in the mirror and look and see if the beard Even. rounds your <laughs> yeah, face because exactly. guys with beards and they if they already have a round face and they don't have any like contours to their uh, their jawline it'll just make them look fat and exactly. it's like no, no, no. Look right to left. And even if you don't trim anything else, just trim your cheek lines right here a little bit shorter than the rest of it. So Contour. when you look in them, yeah, you'll get this fucking awesome contour and you'll yeah. look like you have an angled face. And it's a, it's a trick that guys can use when they weren't, you know, genetically born with a, you know, a, a strong jaw. Uh, and you you were, it. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the king of the strong jaw. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, so another thing that I wanted to get to, because since we're, we, we're going back and forth on all this stuff, um, suits, do you think that they're uh, intimidating at all? Um, because I've, I've, I've had this conversation with several guys on the subject of girls, and it feels to me like, you, like when, you're, when you're dressed simply, more like, like Chase is dressed, uh, you would... Chance. Chance. <laughs> I, was like, it's chance. I ah. did not. Ah. Ah. Just butchering yeah. it away over <laughs> here, Jared. <laughs> Mr. Nick, I had it correct. <laughs> Nick, put it in my head, okay? No, no. 
busted. Damn, I'm no. right. No, it says it right here. Look. Wait, hold on. <laughs> He's sketching it in his paper oh, right now. Terrible. Read that. What does that say? Yeah, it says chance. It says chance, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. Our meeting before we got here. They butchered his name as well, so yeah. it's, it's a trend tonight. You can call me motherfucker, and I'll still answer to it. <laughs> okay. so, even though he's not a motherfucker, I don't have any kids. Not well, yet. Go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not yet. yet. So do you guys feel like suits are ever intimidating? Uh, this is more of a question for Brooke. Do you feel like a sharp-dressed guy can sometimes be a little uh, – is that intimidating to you? Not at all. I think it's very sexy at the right time and place. There's a time and a place for everything. So if, don't walk into a dive bar with a suit. Absolutely not. That's doing too much, and I'm going to think you're trying too hard. Okay, even if it's a nice suit. Even if it's a nice suit and a great pair of shoes. Nope. Okay. Okay. What about you? Uh, I, it depends on, you know, the I already occasion. know your answer. <laughs> 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 uh, I love wearing suits, you know, yeah. but, it, I mean, it depends on the occasion, if you're at a fancy dinner or so forth. But uh, back at home, you know, I see guys in Treeport, Louisiana, which is another small town next to me, People go out to clubs and bars and they're in suit jackets or suit pants and dress shoes. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're at the bar. And, I mean, I think it's good for that time. Whatever time you're doing it, if you're at a professional event, yeah. yes, it makes you look classy, makes you look like a higher class person. But if you're just wearing it just to wear it, I think you're stupid. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And it's funny because you touched on different looks. So real quick to go through different suit looks. If you're at a professional function, uh, suit, tie, cufflinks, all that stuff, dressed up to the nines, everything in. Uh, if you are going out to a club, no tie. Uh, you can Button wear up shirt. You can wear what I call a club shirt. Um, you can wear a jacket. I wouldn't wear a tuxedo jacket. Um, you, you, and you can too. You can as well. But just make sure the shirt's casual, no tie. Uh, you know, you don't have to wear super nice shoes, but you know, it's a good idea. It depends on the club where you're going. Um, and then if you're going to wear jeans and dress shoes and a top, you can do that for a casual business meeting, uh, something like that. And if you are doing, I, I don't think that there's ever, per, personally for me, I feel like it's disrespectful, lazy, and I wonder where your shoes went when you show up in tennis shoes and a suit jacket. And oh, I know that's that awful. There's a, huge, there's a huge trend to do that where like a guy will be in jeans, tennis shoes, uh, you know, a V-neck or whatever, and then he'll be wearing a suit jacket. I'm just like, you sloppy, sloppy. Like, like I, awful. I feel like that's so disrespectful. <clears throat> Even if it's a fresh pair of Jordans? Even if it's a fresh pair of <laughs> Jordans, do not Damn, do it. Damn, Jared. <laughs> no, uh, wait, wait, wait. No, Jordans are out. <laughs> <laughs> wait, is that still in the 90s? <laughs> you don't ever get to wear Jordans unless you are going to the gym. And then even then. I'm hmm. playing. We're in the same ball. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, I love tennis shoes. I'm a tennis shoe freak. I own millions of pairs of tennis shoes for sure. And you can rock them with many things, but... I think we all get a little bit older, you know, tennis shoes were what I wore to school through middle school and high school for the most part, unless I had to change my shoes. But uh, yeah, man, like to bring it back on that, like a suit, like a suit's not intimidating at all. It's really on how you wear it. Like, um, mm -hmm. and again, if you own a suit, it better be tailored. Like I pretty much have all my suits made to my own fittings because there's no point for me to buy something that's not for me in a suit. But I do think you can suit, wear a suit wherever. Like, I mean, I might wear a suit all day from meeting to meeting and then have to rock into a, a dive bar for a minute. You know what I mean? But I'll dress it down. I won't wear the suit jacket yeah. in or roll my sleeves up a little bit. You can dress it down. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you, you play. I get it, you know. But suits are something, you know, I just think that the era of dressing up is a little bit more common these days. I think that we went through the slob phase for a long time or were just lazy and didn't care. And I also think a lot of people should just work out. If you work out a little bit, you'll want to dress nicer. Why? Because you feel better. Like, you know, who doesn't yeah. like their abs popping out of their shirt? I mean, <laughs> so. right. Nick, what do you think? I cut out a little bit there. I One said, more time. Nick, what do you think? <laughs> so on suits, would you think that they're ever intimidating? I mean, that's. Can you hear me? Yeah. I Do I think they're intimidating? Yeah. Do you think that suits um, intimidate women? I, my, my big thing on it, it, on everything is just wearing what you're comfortable in and, and finding your image, your look, and your style. Yes, yeah, so you can't decide it's something, then just, you know, you kind of bagged on that a little bit earlier on. You just can't decide on something and, and wear it. You have to, you do have to formulate your opinion from, you know, thoughts from other people. Definitely get it tailored. I, I said one of my biggest things was, you know, wearing clothes that don't fit. Uh, but wear, wear a suit if you're comfortable in a suit, if it's you, you know, obviously it's going to apply to your profession and what you do for work, where you want to go. I do also believe that you need to dress to be successful. 
You know, if, if you're not successful, you want to be, you want to own your own business, you want to re- meet the right people, you want to network, you better start looking nice, you know, and doing something about it. You do have to start somewhere, and, and dressing nice is, is a great place to start. Yeah. That's a good point. The one thing I want to add to that, if you don't mind, is mm-hmm. uh, I guess you could say a suit is intimidating. And the reason is, I think that's what it was meant for, is it was meant to be like, hey, look at me. I'm doing something with myself in the world. Like, you know, take a look. I think that's not like... I mean, that's more of like a like yeah, I'm different than that person. I you you should want to be with me, you know, for women. That's and funny. That take. I have a, I have several. Yes, different... it should keep some people away, and it should draw others. If it's intimidating to somebody, they should stay yeah. the fuck away from you. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, put. well then. I actually have I have several different theories on suits. I think that one, uh, you know, it's like any package or present. You want to say, hey, there's something nice inside. You you wrap the present in a nice way. I also think that it it could just as easily be taken as le- I want to debase you. I want to take away your personality, your origin, like your originality in every single way. I'm going to put you in a suit so that you are now a carbon uh, uh, like monkey a cookie. suit. Yeah. Like That's a, a good point cutter. too, man. That's why you do flare it up though with that tie or socks or whatever you can do. So I think that to, in order to establish, uh, you know, uh, corporate culture, cohesion, all that good stuff. I think that a lot of people were like, okay, well, let's just do suits. It's easy. And uh, also I think what's great about a suit is honestly, when I wear a suit, it's on the days where I don't feel like actually getting dressed. I'm like, what do I wear? What do I, I don't I don't even want to think about it. Boom, suit. Boom. It's, it's three pieces of clothing that I know look good. Uh, it's very, very easy to just put on a suit. And it's like, everybody's like, damn, you look good. You dressed up. And it's like, actually, <laughs> I just went in my closet and, and threw, you know, my boilerplate on. So uh, you, you keep looking like you want to say something to me. Uh, wow, you can read my face so well. Uh-huh. I wasn't really going to say anything. I was just taking back to when we went to the Vice events together oh yeah and you and i were very well dressed and you were kind of the light of that party because you were in a suit when other people just i mean it was a classy event it was a it was a charity it was classy and Ah. he was about the only guy there in a suit a fancy now and it was was good yeah Yeah. (laughs) all right um so cool nick uh real quick let's uh let's get right into uh your questionnaire and then we're gonna wrap up the show all right. Um, uh, we'll start with Nathan. He already answered this in the beginning. Your favorite way to approach somebody, he said very casually, go up and say hi. Would you like to add anything to that? Oh, man, I could go on for days for that one. But, uh, yeah, I just, I just own it with confidence, you know. Be polite, be nice, smile, say something to, you know, flatter the individual. But the funny thing is just try to f- pick up on that uh, insecurity and use it, you know. <laughs> Because the, the funny thing is, is everyone has insecurities, but that's usually the most beautiful thing about us. Oh, here we've got an insecure Whoa, female. Hey but, <laughs> right, tracking her straight, down. Yeah, good answer right there. Mm, yeah. Oh, no, well, the female. Out. <laughs> All right, Brooke, what's your favorite way to approach someone or be approached by? I do not like any cheesy lines. I like somebody to just be themselves and just, hey, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. But don't come off too strong. Don't be cheesy and don't be too cocky. That confidence is okay. I love how she looks right. at me when she says that. Chance, what's your favorite <laughs> way to approach somebody? Uh, be yourself. Walk up. Uh, 90% of the time when we pick up girls or girls pick up guys back home in Texas, like, hey, boy, hey, girl, and uh, just be yourself. Uh, don't ever try to hide and be somebody you're not. You're, you're not. Uh, that's my point of view to anybody. You know, go up, be yourself, because if you don't, uh, they're really going to find out the real you. If you talk to them more on in life, they're going to, find out your flaws and everywhere else so just be yourself okay uh, don't all right works for me nathan if you could have a room filled with anything what would be in it that's a good question i would um take uncle scrooge's piggy bank i'd have all <laughs> of his ten dollar his 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 special 10 cent coin there that's we go I'd take something that means something to me well in that day it would probably Value. be real silver so it would probably be like a thousand no, times that's a great expensive. question. That's hard to say what I'd want to fill in that room. But I, I'd want to fill it probably most likely with um, – I, I can't even I, – I don't know. Come back to me on that for a second. <laughs> okay, no problem. Brooke. Yes. If you can't have a room with anything in it besides cell phones, what would be in it? Candy. I'm a candy-aholic. There we go. <laughs> All Cupcakes, right. Perhaps. Chance, if you can't have a room filled with anything, what would be in it? Be honest with you, I don't know. To be honest, uh, with Brookhaven yeah. in it, <laughs> I yeah, can answer Brookhaven that for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I would say money, but I mean, money can't buy happiness. Everybody says money does buy happiness, but it really doesn't. 
uh, I've been up and down my entire life with money. Uh, I've been you know, very successful as now. Uh, but, I mean, money doesn't buy happiness. Uh, what I would be stuck with is probably just all my close friends and everybody I've always loved and cared for in life, probably. Yep. That's and this is why I like money. Money. <laughs> All right, Nathan, you got another one for me? Yeah, you know what? To be honest, the, the one thing I'd want a room full filled with is knowledge. And the reason I say mm. that is because there's two, things. There's, two things. there's two things we know in the world, right, as humans. Well, at least nature knows. Is either it grows or it dies. And that's what we do as a human. So either you can choose to grow at a rapid pace and change something in the world, or you can either slowly die, a long, slow death that most people do in the world. But a room full of knowledge would be important to me. I hate to admit that I like a lot of your answers. I do. I really thought I was going <laughs> to think you were like book, king right? of the assholes, but yeah. you're okay. Nice we got along so well in the beginning, didn't yeah. we? I know. <laughs> she, she tried to bite me. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll let you try we to bite. We were almost fighting in the elevator. <laughs> we went into the show, and I was she thinking, oh, out. dear God. <laughs> Oh, Lord. That's why I was walking like 50 foot. All right, Nathan, what is your favorite favorite fetish or fantasy? Oh, you know, I I don't know if I have a favorite, man. I'm such a freak that I just like it all. Oh. Um, But I couldn't say I... A fantasy? You I stumped him. expecting that answer, too? <laughs> no, man, I'm not stumped in an answer. It's just like that it could be answered so many ways that I would... Ma- what would it really be? Well, mean? for posterity's sake, we got three minutes, so pick one. <laughs> pick one. Um, hmm, fantasy. I mean, I always just love two girls, man. I love to please. There we go. That works. Brooke. Uh, sex in the rain, in the mud, in the woods with chance. That's called rape. <laughs> <laughs> Could that be. That is great. You can't rape the answer. willing, though. <laughs> That's true. Good answer. And chance. But she was going to say mud. I was going to say rooftops or balconies or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're down? He's up. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> All right. What's up? All right, so he's sticking to you. Public. That works. All right. <laughs> Nathan, if you had one day to live, how would you spend it? One day to live, I would use that day to actually help others create their goal. Because when I leave, at least I know I helped others create something that could be, lap, I guess, fulfilling. Awesome. Brooke? Can I spend it with all the people I love and care about? Cool. Chance? Enjoy uh, every second I have, time, family, friends. Uh, just enjoying what with I the can. Coors Light. Yeah. Awesome. With Last Coors, question, Nick. With the Coors <laughs> Light. Good stuff, man. Nathan. All right. How can people find you? And there is, is there anything you'd like to promote? Um, yeah, you know, I have my website, NathanBishopLA.com. It's just uh, real estate based, you know, blog about me. Um, I wish I had my cancer foundation up. I will be uh, having that up and running in January. I have a uh, blood cancer research foundation that I want to put together that's going to, uh, you know. I forgot. You're a cancer survivor, right? Yes, 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 yes. That's that's insane. We're wow. going to have to have you back to talk about that. Yeah, we should. Sure. on that. What's that? I said, how'd we not hit on that, Jared? I forgot. There, you know, he's so multifaceted. There's so much. Like, we still got fashion. Then we uh, we were actually, <laughs> this entire show was supposed to be industry-based. We were actually going to do mo- a motivational segment on entrepreneurism, and that's what I was going to have you on here for. And then we switched it at the last second and did fashion. So, uh, Brooke, where can people find you and stuff? You can find me on Twitter under at Miss Brooke Haven and uh, Instagram, Miss Brooke Haven XO. And sometimes you can find me on the radio with you. Jared. Yes. <laughs> or with Chance. Could be. <laughs> uh, Twitter, uh, it's at the Chance Dale. On Twitter, on Instagram, it's Chance Period Dale uh, 44. Nope, nope, it's not. Oh, it's no. she knows at reply, the T H E, Chance, C H A N C E D A L E, the Chance Dale. There she goes. She handles stuff better <laughs> than I do. Awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. And you can always find me and Nick at the Modern Mail. Uh, what is it? Facebook, the Modern Mail Movement, uh, Methodology of the Modern Mail dot com, and uh, the Nick Hawk. Uh, wait, is it Nick Hawk Explicit dot com? It is. Okay, Nick Hawk Explicit dot com. Cool. That's all for tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Modern Mail Radio. You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavostoski and Nick Hawk. Right here on L.A. Talk Radio.